Good afternoon and welcome uh, to this event today. This has been a day that's been long coming. We've waited forever for this to happen. And by the way, my name's Ron Deering, and I always say it, the proud superintendent of the Kanawha County School System. And it's been long in coming, but we have to be very careful about crossing our T's and dotting our I's to make sure that we could get to this day where you can actually see stuff beginning to happen uh, with the land preparation. I'd like to first do some introductions, and uh, if I miss somebody, please raise your hand. I can't see everybody that's uh, come in. We tried to see what we could do. Um, first of all, uh, James Young from FEMA, is he here? Okay. Uh, Mara Box from Senator Manchin's office, is Mara here? No? All right. Mike Todorovich from Disha. Mike? And thank you for everything that you did in making this happen as well. Along the way, I know you fought for us and for a lot of other things, and we appreciate that. Uh, Todd Gunter from Senator Capito's office. Is he here? Oh, over there, back there. Okay. Uh, Justice Tim Armstead. Justice, there he is over there. Uh, ben Ashley from SBA. Over there. Dana Womack from SBA. Back there, Mark Miller from SBA. Okay, Angie Bradley from SBA. All right, uh, Commissioner Kent Carper, right there. Uh, Robin Rector, where are you? Former board member, Robin. Sure. Charlie Burford, the former principal of Herbert Hoover High School. Charlie, raise that hand so people can see you. Uh, uh, Pete Kelly, the former assistant principal of Herbert Hoover. Where are you, Mr. Kelly? Over there. All right. We have Jason Cantrell, who's the current vice principal at Herbert Hoover here. We have Chandra Dalton, who's the current vice principal at Herbert Hoover. Over there. We have Chuck Smith with us, who's our facilities planner. Chuck Smith. Over there. And we have Chuck Wilson, our former facilities planner, who worked very hard in this project from day one when the floods happened. I hope that I've gotten everybody to this point. There's some more introductions to come. If I've missed anybody, it's not intentional, and we'll apologize up front. Um, but thank you for being here today. Um, I also want to take some time to recognize uh, two people who their schools were involved in the flood and have done everything to cooperate and work with the school system and the community uh, to take care of our children in this area. And that's uh, the principal, Vanessa Brown, right there. And principal, Lucy Lovejoy, right there as well. I also want to recognize the wonderful band, the Herbert Hoover Band. Round of applause for that. And I also, um, want to recognize where are all our students that are here today. Raise your hand to our, to our students. <laughs> Let me say this. This is really about you, the students. And I wanted to mention that we do focus groups at all our high schools. And we talk to students. Nobody's present, so they can say what they want. And uh, the students at Herbert Hoover really provided me with a life lesson firsthand. I will forever be grateful that you did that for me. And this is why. The day we were there, we were talking about the new school. And the students were talking about, we know there's going to be a new school. We know future students will be uh, in there as well. And we said, well, it's, I'm glad you feel that way. You're in portables. But you know what they said to me? They said, Dr. Daring, it's really about the teachers, the students, the administrators, and the staff. That's the spirit of Herbert Hoover, not the building. Now, is that not remarkable? Because in the face of all that adversity, they found something positive and looked to the future about where are we going. As an adult, I needed that lesson, and that has stayed with me from day one when they said that to me from that point on. Always look towards the future. So the next one I'd like to recognize is first our board members, and I want to recognize Jim Crawford, Tracy White, Rick Cavender, Becky Jordan, and I'm Ryan White. Let me say this. We are fortunate. I say we are fortunate to have these board members. They have stood right with us every inch of the way 
every minute, making sure that it would be knowing that it was a long process, that we crossed our T's and dotted our I's so that we could be here today. Make no mistake, the force of this board standing right with us every minute of the way to make sure this school got built, and that is why we're here today. And to speak on behalf of the board members is President Brian White. Thank you, Dr. Brian. I am so excited and honored to be here today to help make ground for the new Herbert Hoover High School. First on behalf of the board, Rick Cavender, Becky Jordan, Jim Crawford, and Tracy White, I would like to thank the Elk River community for being here and being supportive of a truly state-of-the-art school that our children, students will have to help better their lives through an outstanding education. It is truly amazing the resilience I have seen in the Elk River community after such a terrible event. I would like to thank the students who have been without a school for the past three and a half years and have pers persevered through this terrible tragedy that happened to the Elk River community. You not only were able to continue learning through this unfortunate event, but were able to increase your academic achievement against all odds. This says a lot about your spirit and the spirit of the Elk River community that has been extremely supportive of you. This has been a long time coming and I truly wish that we could have gotten here much sooner so that many of you can enjoy the great school that will eventually be here. But I'm very grateful that you pushed through and made your family and community proud. I would be remiss not to mention the parents and family members of those students who have supported their children at this very difficult time as well. I would like to thank Mr. Kelly and Dr. Durain who have been very patient with this whole process and have contributed greatly to the design of what I believe will be a great school for Kanawha County. Thank you to the board staff and staff of Herbert Hoover and Elkview Middle School who have moved this project forward and worked with the temporary schools for our students while they have been displaced. I'd like to thank FEMA, the state of West Virginia, and the West Virginia School Board Authority for funding the construction of the school and working through all the issues that have made this groundbreaking po process possible. I'm very excited to see the programs that our school will have, particularly with the focus the school will have on vocational and technical programs for the area. Our county and state will be very lucky to have a school like Herbert Hoover High School, and I'm so happy to be a part of a, building a school that will educate the future leaders and economic drivers of West Virginia. Thank you to everyone for coming and being a part of a great day for Kanawha County. I have the pleasure of now introducing a very special lady to me and to this community in so many ways. Um, from the day the floods took place until this day, she doesn't hesitate to call me and say, what's going on? Come on, let's move this forward. I'm like, all right, we can do it. And that's the mayor of Clendenin, Kay Summers. Hey, guys, I'm going to tell you one thing before we start. This is about our students today, and both people who've spoken so far have talked about that. And I know a lot of you, and I'm very, very proud, but I want you to be patient. My family told me that I had to have a speech in front of me because, as most of you know, I do like to talk. And they said we cannot stay here until 5 o'clock this evening. So I would like to take a uh, moment to thank uh, Principal Mike Kelly and uh, Dr. During for including me in this very, very special day. I think Dr. During had on his phone a big X in my picture there, don't answer the phone. Because he's not, he's not exaggerating, I did call him lots. And for you who don't know me, like he said, my name is Kay Summers, and I have, I'm not a graduate of Herbert Hoover, but I feel like I have. I've been there many years. We have two children that graduated from there. We have uh, a granddaughter, Tatum, who's going to graduate this year in 2020. We have a granddaughter, Lauren, who's going to graduate in 2021. We have a granddaughter, Elizabeth, who's going to graduate in 2022. And we have a, a granddaughter, Caroline, who's going to graduate in 2023. And then we have Harper Gwen Summers, who's going to be the class of 2029. So we're real excited about that. So, Dr. Green, now I know why you're leaving, because I'm going to be around you and, and Terry are not happy about this. Uh, when I was invited to speak today, I was trying to find the words adequately to describe the event of events that has uh, that have shaped our community over the last three and a half years. And to be honest, it was, in fact, very difficult. Uh, in 2016, many attempts to sum up our new normal, our reality through lots of media, and many who were merely voyagers into our new normal, 
in reality, but they had absolutely no idea what we were feeling and would feel. The headlines read, The Thousand Year Downpour, The Story Above Fold, reported on June 23, 2016, a flood hit the area of West Virginia and the nearby parts of Virginia, uh, resulting in 23 deaths. The flood was a result to 8 to 10 inches of rain falling over a period of 12 hours, and resulting in a flood was among the deadliest in West Virginia history. But what the media didn't report and couldn't report was that the young men and women of our community, commonly referred to as the Elk River, you all better be excited about Elk River, we're very proud of Elk River, uh, would come out better, stronger, and more resilient even though than before. And today, as the ground is being broken for Herbert Hoover, we are reaping the benefits of resilience. Today is, and I apologize for this, but today isn't about our politicians. It's not about shallow promises or broken promises. Today isn't about heartache and loss. Today is about how our students have taught all of us to be better human beings. How they have taught us the adversity does not define one future or how they have taught up the community to take on many shapes and forms. Not long ago I overheard a conversation and believe it or not I didn't interrupt it and, the, and a, an adult was asking a Hoover student, so how do you like your new school? How's it going for you? And the student said, ma'am, I'm sorry but we're still in the portables. But you know, the portables aren't all bad. Matter of fact, some of our classrooms are nicer than what we had before. There was no negativity. There was no, oh, woe is me. This adult, had an adult been asked that question, I'm not for sure the answer. You know what, I don't even know how I would answer that question. But I'm quite certain my response would have not been the same. Take, the takeaway I got from this is don't focus on why and what you don't have. Find the good in what you do have. Look at the world through scarlet and royal blue colored glasses. That's your all's colors, by the way. <laughs> Keep Herbert Hoover's pride no matter what adversity life throws your way. Our students have found the good. They have excelled academically and we're very proud of that. And because of that, because of the leaders, the, the staff, and our teachers, and I'd love to name every one of you and all that, but Mr. Kelly, your staff is absolutely fantastic. And I'm very proud to be from Hoover and I brag on you all the time. And you know, even Commissioner Carper knows how about great so I tell him too, and he just gave our basketball team some money, and then they came up last night to watch them play ball. So thank you, Commissioner Carper. They are excelling in uh, arts and sports, math, trades, robotics, and they are surviving with grace and compassion. Our young men and women of Elk, of Elk River are who we all should strive to be like. With the tools that they will be given in this new state-of-the-art facility, the sky is limitless. So today, as we start moving mountains and dirt and rocks and trees, keep in mind the words of Dr. Seuss. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, and we see some mountains and all that, so get on your way. So to this great and patient people of our community, today is our day. Our future is brighter than ever before. To this year's graduating class, thank you for showing us all how to grow through the loss and excel in adversity. You will always be remembered as a heart of our community, the ones who never gave up, who stuck by us knowing that they would never attend a high school with bricks and mortar. You have shown the community means so much more than we could ever imagine and that the high school experience is what you choose to make of it. Thank you for your youthful enthusiasm and for showing us all how to flourish even darkest hours. So today we celebrate, we are hopeful. We can see a future and it's bright. Thank you to all who have continued to fight for our community and push forward for our growth. Three and a half years ago, I despised to see mud. It smelled bad, it looked bad, but today I'm really excited to see the mud and, and the sunshine. But So mud today is not a sign of destruction. Today is a sign that means that progress. So bring on the mud. Let's get the new home for the Herbert Hoover Huskies. And I want to thank you very much. 
and may God bless all. Thank you. Mayor, just so you know, I have the colors on. Just, I have the colors on. All right. Okay, so now I have the fortunate pleasure of introducing our next guest and speaker, and that is uh, Mike Kelly, the principal of Herbert Hoover High School. I can't say enough about him, his uh, administration, uh, all his staff members, how wonderful they've been through this whole process. And I, it was mentioned, too, that uh, achievement still went up, so the kids' education didn't suffer. And I think that's an incredible thing to happen, given what had taken place here. Uh, he's demonstrated great leadership. Um, he's worried 24-7 about the school, when it was going to open, well, how it was going to look, how can we take care of the kids. That's the kind of leadership that we want in all our administrators. And you're very f fortunate at, at this uh, part of the county that you have a lot of great leadership in your schools. And that says a lot. So it's my pleasure and also my honor to introduce to you for, as the next speaker, Mike Kelly, the principal of Herbert Hoover High School. I want to thank Dr. During for that introduction and uh, certainly uh, echo his remarks about the principals and the leadership at all of our feeder schools. Uh, the, the things that we accomplish are not just attributable to us, but also attributable to the job that our feeder schools are doing. And so I, I want to echo those words. I want to thank everyone who helped us get here, uh, all the representatives of federal, state, local government uh, at the federal level. FEMA provided us with a very functional temporary facility and is helping us rebuild. Uh, our state officials have been supportive. Governor Justice, I know, believes in community schools very strongly and he wanted these flood impacted schools rebuilt. And, and I feel like we are the, the quintessential community school, frankly, and, uh, and I appreciate his support for that. Uh, the legislature, passed a flood relief bill that will help pay for part of this building. Uh, locally, the county commission has been here and committed uh, considerable resources. Law enforcement has been very helpful to us. The National Guard was there for us. And there were municipalities, churches, charities, celebrities, volunteers, neighbors, friends, and complete strangers who came to our aid. Uh, we were out shortly after the flood out here at the parking ride over here at the exit and there were two people pulling a camper that had driven here from Las Vegas to help after the flood. Um, there have been tremendous successes, there have been some disappointments as is natural in such difficult circumstances, but I, be, I believe everyone tried their best to do what was right. Um, I want to thank specifically, and I'm, I'm not going to name a lot of names because uh, there's too many friends here and too many people who have helped, uh, but uh, Missy Lovejoy, don't know where we'd have been without Missy and our family over there at Elk Um And I'm thankful to the board, I'm thankful to Dr. During. Uh, I was present when conversations took place about sending our students to other schools. That unthinkable possibility was real, and I will never forget Dr. During's words. He said, those people have lost enough. We will not take that school from them. And many have contributed to this day, but I truly believe that we would not be here today without the efforts of Dr. During on our behalf, and I'm forever grateful for that. And no training for how to react to something like this, uh, like we encountered. There's no graduate class that anybody took. Uh, you get up each day and you go where you think you're needed the most that day. Uh, as we thought about what we would do moving forward, we learned from each other. I learned from you. I learned, um, 
I learned from a student who shortly after the flood said, as long as you keep us together, we'll be fine. We don't believe in excuses at Herbert Hoover. I learned from a teacher who said we're going to be humble and we're going to be thankful for what we have. And we learned from a resilient community. We've heard that word a lot today, haven't we? Resilient. Where people had lost so much. You know, you get up every day and you think about feeling sorry for yourself, but you look at all the other people that are struggling with so much more than what we were struggling with. And when we used to go out and try to take food and water and I can't tell you how many times people who were pulling everything out of their house and you tried to offer them something to eat or something to drink and they didn't want to take it. And they said, we're fine, but would you please go down the road and check on my neighbor? They really got hit hard. Just such pride in this community and the resolve that this community showed me, showed us, showed us the way forward. The classes of 2017, 18, 19, and 20 deserve to be honored for their leadership. The classes of 21 and 22 will have to exhibit similar leadership. And I hope that as long as Herbert Hoover exists that these students will be held in the highest esteem. But today I want to spend a minute to focus on this class of 2020 they were incoming freshmen the year after the flood. I know from talking to some of you that there were conversations at dinner tables about whether these young men and women would stay at Hoover or whether they'd transfer somewhere else. And that's a reasonable conversation for a family to have. Everyone wants what's best for their children. you stay. You trusted these teachers, the staff, to fight for your kids. You trusted them to provide a quality education in spite of our challenges. And they fought for our kids, and our kids fought for themselves, and you fought for us too. We didn't only survive, we excelled. Herbert Hoover remains one of the highest achieving schools in the state because we stuck together because we didn't make excuses, because we leaned on each other, and we counted on family. Herbert Hoover's not a place, never has been. Herbert Hoover is part of the spirit that binds this community together. <coughs> Soon there will be a new building to house that spirit. And the day that it opens will not signal an end, but a new beginning. We will expect those Hoover students to continue to lift the school to new heights as you have. But we will also ask them to remember. And I hope that each and every future Husky, each and every day, will walk with a great sense of pride and responsibility in the footsteps of those who came before. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all being here. And now I'm going to uh, introduce, uh, we couldn't have all of our students up here. We had to select some, but to speak on behalf of the class of 2020, Ms. Delaney Buckner. I'm a senior at Herbert Hoover. Thank you, Mr. Kelly, for allowing me the opportunity today to speak on behalf of the class of 2020. I was an incoming freshman when the devastating flood took so much away in our community. Those muddy waters may have taken our school building, but the pride of being a Husky has never wavered. I'm thankful for our administration, who have been leaders, our staff and teachers, who have been so encouraging and for our students for persevering. We as a senior class are thankful to have such great classes before us to show us the true pride of being a Husky 
Husky pride means being strong, resilient, hardworking, supportive, and passionate for each other. Our class of 2020 is the first class to go all four years in a temporary location. Despite not having a permanent location, we have still maintained the ability to be successful in and outside of the classroom. We have continued to main our maintain our Husky family and its traditions. A house is just a house until a family moves in and makes it a home. I'm excited to see this new school building, which will have new opportunities, but it will not be Hoover until the new students, staff, and administration move in and make it home of the Huskies. I challenge the future Huskies to continue the Husky traditions and to continue to make us Husky proud. Thank you. All right. I'm excited to introduce our ne next guest. He's last but not least in his request that he speak last. Um, is the governor of uh, West Virginia. And I personally want to say thank you to him because when we needed to get the money fast to purchase the land, he agreed to let us get the money from the state so that we could go ahead and purchase the land and not in, in general budget $3.2 So I want to thank you personally, Governor, for doing that for us because it allowed us to get the land right away. So it is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you the 36th Governor of the great state of West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice. Hold on, you please. I'll sit down. You know, while I was sitting here, I've got... I've got to tell you just this, and I won't take long, I won't bore you, but in a little community of White Sulphur Springs, just like your community here, seven months before I became your governor, the same situation happened on that June day, and after that, there was Tragedy beyond belief, loss of life, homes washed away, all your sacred memories washed away in so many different ways. I'll never forget ever in my life the worst event that I have ever been around or ever been involved with. You know, walking the hollows looking for bodies, it could never, ever have been any worse in my opinion. Now just imagine this. The guy that works on the scoreboard at our ball games that I'm coaching, as close to me as this could possibly be. And I'm gonna wait just one second. This fellow's name is Ronnie Scott. Ronnie's wife and, and him were with their children in their house, and Ronnie said, I'll take the kids and I'll get to high ground. You take the car and get it to high ground. She did, and he did. And then she went back to the house because she couldn't get the dog in the car. And then she called Ronnie on her cell phone and said, Ronnie, I can't get out of the house. The water's coming up too fast. The next call was she was in the attic and she said, Ronnie, I smell gas. He climbed up the hill to where he could just barely see as the house exploded. She was blown into a tree with 70% burns on her body and died three days later. I'm telling you, I know what you've been through, and I know it's really tough. I also know how every day that's gone by that we haven't had this school in the process of being rebuilt is a day unnecessary. I know how hard it's been, but I also know how hard everybody's worked to make it a reality. Washington is a cesspool of red tape, and it takes forever and a day. But I would end by just saying just this, especially to the kids. You know, 
most all have not experienced being in your school. But you have experienced something that absolutely no one will ever forget. You won't forget it, and no one will forget the contribution and the sacrifice that you've made for this incredible school. It was here decades before you. It will be here decades after you. In many, many ways, in many ways, you as a school authority, as a school, as, as the school board, as our teachers, as our administrators, as the kids, in many ways, you make me think of those that have traveled across oceans and sacrificed for us in every way, shape, form, or fashion. You truly have carried the torch of the Huskies. You have carried that torch in every way. I could never thank you enough. God bless each and every one of you, and God bless this day is finally here. Thank y'all. All right, so again, today is really a day for our students. So the next part of this will be that we have students from each of the feeder schools, and we have uh, students from Herbert Hoover High School. They will come down and line up in front along the brown dirt and get a shovel, because um, it'll be about the students, and we want them to introduce themselves and tell you the school and the grade. And then behind that, the people on the stage, if you'll go down and grab a shovel and kind of intermingle in with them, and then we'll do a count of three, and we can all take our dig and just leave out a big yell for Herbert Hoover. So if we could have our students go first, we'd like our students to get down there and up in front first that were des designated by the schools and, and the high school, if you will go down first. And we'll make sure that you all get a shovel. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for the lessons that you've taught us. You've made us proud. a little bit more and we'll squeeze everybody in. There you go. And if you'll move up towards the brown dirt a little bit, there you go. Chuck, we need more shovels. We need more shovels. I know we have them. They're there. You're getting one. Every, uh, if every student have a shovel, this is like school. Raise your hand if you don't. All right. Now, if the people on stage will go down and kind of get behind them and intermingle, and then we'll do a countdown, three, two, one, and everybody will take a dig. Yeah, we can start at this end. Why don't you introduce yourself? The great love you're in and everything. I'm Dustin Stewart. I'm a junior in the class of 2021. Hi, my name is Chloe Sovine. I'm an 8th grade student at LP Middle School in graduating in the class of 2020. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Gansar. I'm a sophomore in Herbert Hoover. I'm graduating in the class of 2020. Hi, I'm Eli Robertson. I'm a freshman at Herbert Hoover. I'll be graduating in the class of 2020.
Thank you for coming today.